So I can lecture about what I want, so I'm gonna lecture about my favorite player. Me, no. Uh, my favorite player, as everybody knows, is MVL, right? You do that at home. Talk to people at home. No, no. Oh, my, my favorite living player, oh, it's close, it is Maxime Vachier Le Grave, the number one player in France. Currently number 10 in the world, although I'm very frustrated because he should be number eight in the world, but he decided not to beat his last two opponents. And he played sort of quick draws with lower rated players. If he had beaten either one of them, he'd be eighth in the world. Terrible. Anyway, I like Maxime Vachier Le Grave for several reasons. One is he plays for a win against higher rated players with white and black, although not the last two games. Um, he hasn't lost a game since July 2013. Sort of like, you, oh no, never mind. And uh, he beats Grandmasters pretty convincingly, and he has a very interesting opening repertoire. Uh, I think it's Chedlishvili, although it's MCH is the first three letters. So I'm not sure you say that. Okay, now he's black against MVL. You can hear me really good now? You've never heard me so well? It's looking good. So what you're saying is MVL, you never heard me so well. Okay. E4, shot, no, he always plays E4. Okay, C6. Now, I must admit, <clears throat> I play the Carol Khan occasionally. Uh, I wouldn't play it against MVL because he always pushes all his pawns and wins. He does it every game. So if he wins every game, I'm going to play something else. So let's see if he does that this game. E5, that's what he does. And I actually made a video for chess.com a few weeks ago on winning with the advanced Carol Khan for white, and MVL had one of the games, and just does this, and then you lose. Bishop to f5, x clam. Now, 30 years ago, everybody played knight c3 here, and 20 years ago, they started playing knight f3, and occasionally MVL just pushes all his pawns. He'll play h4, c4, g4, f4. So, okay, knight d2, even different, ready to push all his pawns and knight b3. So this is a way I've seen Shabalov play. You're trying to stop black from playing c5 by putting the knight on b3. And sometimes black plays c5. So that shows you how well that works. Then he plays c5. Okay. And MVL wins a piece and black resigned. Now we'll look at the next game. No, that's not what happened. How did black win back his piece? Yes? Queen a5, Queen a5 check. Now, if only Sam Shanklin was here, I'm sure he's watching. Because Sam won a game this year against, in this very similar position, it won best game of the US championships, I'm sure you all know it. No, nothing. Against Varakobian, who will be the GM in residence next week. And uh, Var had won four games in a row, and he played the Carol Khan, and he lost to the two bishops. Here, white has two bishops, which is more bishops than his opponent has. Opponent has one bishop. And white has a little more space, because white has a pawn on c5. And this is very similar to the game that Shanklin won against the Cobian. It's not the same, but it's a similar pawn structure. Okay, queen a4 check. So who wants to play queen to c6? Anyone? No? You, you want your opponent to play it? So queen c6 loses the queen to bishop b5. So he played knight to d7. Bishop to b5 attacking the knight. Queen c7. Knight f3. And white has two bishops and white's attacking. So Vashu Le Grave likes to attack. Castles a6. Black would like to castle, but if he castles kingside, he's going to lose his knight. If he castles queenside, he's going to lose his king. Because queen takes a7, and you'll resign soon. So a6, which doesn't really attack the bishop, because the pawn is pinned to the rook. So if whack ever takes the bishop, you'll lose your rook. So MVL develops his other bishop. Now both knights are attacked, so I really don't recommend castling. Knight to g6, now that knight's not attacked. Knight to d4. And man, MVL always plays the most aggressive move, and the computers always like it. So it's very much like Tall, but less sacrifices and more accurate and more alive. Okay, Tall not alive anymore. So MVL more alive.
Okay? But this is the way Ta would have played if he was alive. Aggressive, occasionally sacrifice, and put a lot of pressure on your opponent. Well, I wouldn't want to be black here because black can take this pawn on e5, but that opens the file to his king. If he doesn't take that pawn, I'm not sure what active play that he has. White's pieces are all really active. So he did take the pawn. That's pretty scary. Knight takes bishop. Rook e1. Can't you just win every game like this? Easy. Just and then resigns. Now, white's threatening. Rook takes knight winning, and bishop takes knight winning. Because all the pieces are pinned and forked and skewered. <clears throat> I guess if you castle, I could do some tricks like bishop takes knight and rook e7. I wonder if that works. Let's see if he castled. Now he played f6. What rule of mind does that break? Eric? Never play f6. Never play f6. I wonder who won this game. So I would have castled, and I would have lost, but at least I tried. Okay. He played f6. Rook takes e5 check. That's what you were going to suggest? Say so yeah. Good, good answer. OK, now, uh, yeah, now black is very safe. So the problem is, if you take with a pawn, like over there, then queen e7 is going to be mate soon. Like queen b4 and queen e7 mate with advantage. So I'm guessing he didn't take with a pawn. Uh, taking with a knight's illegal. Taking with a queen looks terrible. So I don't know what he did. I better push this button and find out. Who wants to defend with black? You can do it. Notice how in Morphe style, all of white's pieces are attacking, and now the last piece is ready to come into the game. I don't think black castled yet. Maybe, but I forgot about it. Took with the queen. Bishop takes knight. And bishop f4. And black has two bishops for a rook. And black's getting checkmated. And his king is terrible. And he has bad posture. And he didn't send his mom a, mother for a birthday card for Mother's Day. Right? Because her name was like Chedville. He's like, I don't know. OK, queen e4, f3, because you don't want to straighten out black's pawn structure. And every grandmaster wants to have white here. Two bishops against a rook. And now that rook is almost trapped, or is trapped. Man, where's that rook going? Rook c8 here. And the rook on a8 is especially good. No. OK, and here black gave up because he was embarrassed. Yeah, this bishop d7 is pretty crushing. OK, yeah. so that game, he made it look easy. He castled. He started attacking, moving his arm forward. And his opponent went, ah, my king. OK, that'll teach him to have a name I can't pronounce. All right, 70 move win. Now we're not going to look at that. OK, Gelfand's pretty good, right? No? He's lectured here before. Who's at the Gelfand lecture? I was in China. I have a good excuse. I fell asleep. See? There you go. OK, now this was played in the Olympiad in 2010. I actually know this game. How do I know this game? I don't know any games. Yeah, this is the game where I think MVL played a novel. Oh, no. Galfan played a novelty, like I moved 20, then he resigned and I moved 25. So novelty didn't work out very well. OK, MVL's white plays d4. Now, this may surprise you. Most of the super GMs play everything with white. They play knight f3 on move one, e4, d4. Then if their opponent's preparing for them, they might prepare the wrong way. Now, in 2008, I was playing in the US Championship in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the mecca of chess. And not, you know, you guys, you're the worst audience ever. And the last audience was even worse. Okay. So I'm, I'm playing uh, Alexander Shabalov, several time US champion. And Shabalov, for the most part, plays e4, and then he checkmates me. Then he trash talks about it. OK, so I prepared several hours for e4. I sat down at the board, and he played d4. OK, in the last round of the tournament, I played Gregory Kaidanov, and Gregory plays d4. 
I prepared for several hours, and he played e4. And I used my Shabalov preparation for Kaidanov. I was like, oh, well, he played e4. And I drew both games, but very suspicious. So most strong grandmasters play both moves. Now, I played d4 every game before I moved to St. Louis for like the last 20 years. And then I was like, I want to play e4 because that sounds like it's fun. So I lost all my games. It was fun. <clears throat> so now I play e4 and d4. And occasionally I play knight f3 or b3. So even I don't know what I'm going to play on move one. Now MVL, who plays e4, 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 even in an Olympiad against one of the world's best players, plays d4 and still plays 100 moves of theory. That's a professional. <clears throat> now Gelfand plays the Slav. And we get this crazy variation. Now do you think Gelfand played the crazy move, d takes c4, or the attempt to play boring with h6? Remember, it's Gelfand. h6, h6 yeah. Okay. Now, bishop takes f6 is the boring, solid move. White is this much better. Bishop h4 is a pawn sacrifice. You have to know 80 moves of theory. Which one did MVL play? Bishop h4. Which is funny because MVL usually plays e4 on move one, but he still knows a lot of theory here. Not sure how he knows theory and everything. So they play this crazy line where it would be nice to know 25 moves of theory. That would help you. And all the side lines. Okay? And they played a really long theoretical line, which has been played many times at the grandmaster level. And still theory. And at some point, and all these moves are theory, but okay, obviously they both do them all somehow. And at some point, uh, I think it was Gelfan who played the new move. Yeah, here it is. Gelfan played knight takes e4, never been played before. And MVL is like, okay, queen takes queen. <clears throat> and castles check. He got out of check. King to e8, exclam. That's the way he got out of check. And now bishop f4, exclamation mark. Now that's a tough move to make when your opponent's played a novelty because f2 is hanging. Except f2 is not hanging because the bishop on b7 is hanging. And you want to have two bishops in chess. Now white has a very strange idea here. One you hardly ever see. White wants to take on h6 and then queen is h pawn. With an extra queen, he figured he'd win. Okay, and that's a good plan. I like that plan. Okay, how do you defend against that plan? Good plan. Well, a low-rated player who was afraid of that plan might play rook h8 defending their h pawn, but you don't want to play rook h8 because then rook d4, and you basically lose your fourth rank. So we have to play aggressively. Knight takes c5, and they trade, and he goes, give me the h pawn, and let me queen my h pawn. Good plan, right? Knight c5, threatening knight to d3 check. And the king moves, takes on g2, and he tries to queen his h pawn. So black is a pawn ahead, but if white queens his h pawn, black will be two pawns ahead, except white's going to have a queen. So. so knight takes f2 doesn't work, because we pin the knight, we take the rook, and the knight on h1 is not well placed, because we're going to go take it. So that doesn't work. So he played f5, h6 with the a4 mention plan. King f7, h with the a4 mention plan of getting a queen. Oh, he stopped it. Oh. I hate when they do that. b3. Now, bishop d4 could be played, but then e5. So now, the knight on d3 isn't as stable as it should be. And as we all know, horses should be stable. N nothing. Yeah. Okay, so what's funny is if I take the pawn on c4, then I can queen that pawn. Solid. Okay, also a7 is hanging. So I have a pawn on the seventh rank, and I'm trying to win all your other pawns. So he played e5 question mark, because he was in time trouble. Why was he in time trouble? I know why. I wasn't even there, and I know why. Because he's Gelfand, so he was in time trouble. That's how he rolls. Gelfand plays very methodically. Take on c4 and queen the c pawn. Knight takes f2. 
C5, C6, C7, C8. Good plan, right? Okay, rook F3, C, C, good plan. And rook C1 is probably good, but he checked. And the thing is, if the black king moves towards the rook, we play rook G7, rook G8. You don't want the guy to play rook G7, rook G8, because then you'll have to lose your rook. So he stopped that, but C7. So that's a lot of passed pawns. Uh, now white's threatening rook to d8. So f4, and he checked first. And the king stayed there, so after rook to d8, we could take the h pawn. Check. And yeah, you lose a rook if you take it. If you take this pawn, I check. And now it says rook to, it says rook to d8, although, actually I guess rook to d8 is better than my move. My move was rook to h1 check, which I also like a lot. Also good. Rook to d8 is, I guess, better because it's mate. I guess mate's good. He win two rooks. Winning two rooks is good. Okay, so he played king to f7, rook to d8, and Gelfand gave up. So MVL is relentless. He just attacks, attacks, attacks. And in this instance, he just kept pushing his past pawns. And it was shocking, if you go back 15 moves, like that pawn was on b2, and that pawn was on h4, and he just pushes into the seventh rank. And that's because black had other issues to deal with. What was surprising about that was they're playing 20 moves of theory, and MVL doesn't play d4 all that often. Maybe it was special preparation for Gelfand, knowing that Gelfand would play this Moscow variation. So pretty good game from MVL, which I say a lot. Okay, now Caruana, he's one of the world's best players, right? In fact, you may not know this. In fact, you definitely don't know it. You might know because I told you four times. Today, Caruana broke 2,800 fide because he won in round one and he won in round two of Norway. Just like I would have done, but I didn't want to go there. I was working here. Otherwise, I would have gone to Norway. Okay. Now, Agdestein, who should have zero, he has two draws. And he's rated like, you know, 100. And he's 100 years old. So somehow he's drawing all his games. Caruana is winning all his games. Now, unfortunately, Caruana's reputation in the world is he's a terrible blitz player. That's his reputation. It may be unfounded. However, three days ago, not three days ago for you, but for you, three days ago, there was a blitz tournament in Norway, and Caruana lost an 11 moves to, M to Carlsen. So if you're going to lose an 11 moves, you don't get a good reputation as a blitz player, okay? Even if you're playing Carlsen. Now, this game also was less than 20 moves. This was a blitz game played in 2010. MVL still playing E4. And we have a Rui Lopez. Usually, white's not winning in 12, 13 moves. And Rui Lopez is. Not usually. Okay? Especially when black's 2,800. Then black can defend. Okay, and this is all theory. And here, black has about seven different book moves. Knight a5 is the old move. Knight b8 is very old. Bishop b7. He played knight b8, the briar. d3. In fact, this position was seen yesterday in a game we had in a class between Spencer Feingold Black, Justin GM Hall with white, and the GM lost. Incredible. Bishop B7, although Justin played A4 that game very early. Solid. So white wants to put his knights on F5, G4, get his queen there, and win. Okay, so he's getting his knights in there. Bishop to g5. I don't know about this bishop f8 move. Was bishop f8 actually played? That seems crazy. Can I just take on f6? What kind of move is that? Bishop g5. And this says that black resigned. Yeah, I agree with that. This looks like black's getting crushed on f6. So black played d5 too early and didn't defend his knight on f6. And more importantly, the score of this game must be wrong because nobody, oh wait a minute, he lost in 11 moves. Eh, never mind. So Caruana, not a good blitz player, 
but soon to be world champion, right? No? Maybe? See, he plays pretty well. No. Okay, so that game, I don't believe the score. I don't believe it, although maybe. All right, now this game I do believe because it was against Magnus Carlsen. Now, I'm not going to show one of my favorite MVL games because we don't have five hours for the lecture. But there is a game you can look up yourself. MVL beat Magnus Carlsen in a slow tournament game, and the game took exactly 100 moves. And MVL had open A and H files, and he kept controlling different ones. And Carlsen moved his head back and forth, like in soccer, and, then, and he ended up losing. So that was one of his great victories. This was a blitz game, and this looks very familiar. Now, MVL played bishop takes c6. We see a lot of unusual variations in blitz tournaments, rapid tournaments, blindfold tournaments. Now, there was a great tournament they had every year, which they don't have anymore, called the Amber Tournament. Who's heard of the Amber Tournament? OK, that two's good. OK, and in Amber, they played 25-minute chess. Then they played 25-minute blindfold chess. So some of those games and some of those openings were a bit iffy. But they invited the best players in the world. So when they forgot where the pieces were, that was pretty funny. Because then you're like, wait a minute, why is your queen hanging with bait and one? OK, so and then in the blindfold and in the 25-minute, they would play unusual openings. Because you know they weren't playing rated chess, so they'd try something new. Now the players play the same opening every game. People get bored. Well, this is a blitz game, so we can see something new. OK, queen f6. Now, queen f6 is actually a very interesting move. It's not played a lot in slow chess, but I think it's actually a pretty good move. Uh, and it gets out of the boring queen trade variations that we see when black plays f6 instead. d4 takes bishop g5, queen to d6. And we see a very unusual position right away. And this looks like black is more or less equalized. So when, black plays the when white plays the exchange variation, he's trying to get a pawn majority. He's saying, I have four to three on the king's side, but your four to three doesn't matter because you have double pawns. So when we get to the end game, I'm going to get a passed pawn. I'm going to get more space on the king's side, and you have nothing. And players with black don't seem to mind because they have a bishop, and their bishop tries to dominate. So normally, white's happy to play an end game. And white's also going to be happy to get rid of the bishop. So. And he does. So MVL just says, I'm better because I have a majority, and your majority doesn't matter. You have doubled pawns. And again, obviously my favorite player, a living player, but normally he plays for checkmate, but he also wins long end games when his opponents defend better. And this game goes on and on and on, and he has the slightest of advantages. And it looks like it's one of like playing at a slow tournament, and the game would take six hours. It looks like one of those games. Because when I play Blitz chess, usually it's like I blunder, then you blunder, then I blunder, then you blunder, and then both of our flags fall that neither one of us notices it. Then we both in checkmate. And then somebody says stalemate. And then somebody watching calls the flag, and he's thrown out. But here, it looks like a slow game. Like slight advantage for white, try to advance my majority, stop the black from having counterplay on the queen side, repeat whenever possible. And finally, MVL advances his majority on the king side. And Carlson does the same on the queen side. But as you can see, white's majority is real, and black has those doubled pawns. Still, it should be a draw, I think. Kicking the rook out, that wasn't very nice. Well, I like knight e1. He wants to play knight to d3. Ooh, that was a mean move. That c5 pawn could be weak. The f5 pawn could be weak. White could make a queen. So if you're taking notes, especially you at home, I'm sure you're taking notes at home. Uh, when you're playing MVL, don't let him queen, because then you'll be down a queen. Seems like he likes to do that. He likes to get all these passed pawns. OK, so he sacrificed or blundered a pawn, 
and now he's going to take the h7 pawn. And now he's just losing. Although, wait a minute, maybe not. And this looks like it's just a draw. But that's why it's a blitz game. And black's trying to win. And probably their flags both fell here. No. Ooh, h7, that's mean. So in this position, he thought if he took the pawn and white took that pawn, it would be a draw. So he played knight e4 for the win. Or as we also say, for the loss. Yeah, h7. I hate when that happens. So that should have been a draw like the last, I don't know, 10 moves. Probably black was better. But when you're blitzing out moves, that's what happens. What's funny is black has all of his pieces stopping the H pawn. And he said, no, 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 you can move it. Here you go. He didn't listen to my advice. When MVL wants to queen his H pawn. C2, now what would you do? What should white do? Take on C2. Take on C2. Then if he takes on H7? Then rook checks, yeah. I hate when that happens. OK, but now, what's the problem? We just move our rook, and I stopped your pawn from queening. Like rook h1. Then what do you do? What should white do after rook h1, or rook h4, or rook h6? Rook c8, or I guess you could also play knight g6, check and queen, or queen and knight g6. Now he did this. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, MVL's good to queen up. OK, and here black resigned. So there, it looked like white was pressing. White messed it up. And then he won anyway, because black went too far. In fact, one thing I learned about going too far uh, in the Chicago Open, this isn't what you think. The Chicago <laughs> Open, uh, which finished last week, one of the players who tied for first was St. Louis's own. Anyone? Are you yelling the answer at home? N me? That, I like that answer. No. Uh, don't tell the IRS I won the Chicago Open. No, it was uh, Priyad Uh And he won the last round against Caden Shroff. So Caden won no money, and Priyad Arshin won 7,500. If it was the other way around, it would have been Caden winning 7,500, Priyad Arshin winning no money. However, as I learned from my source of invaluable information, Facebook, no, no it was an article that Caden wrote. Uh, Preet Arshin actually offered a draw about move 20, but Caden needed to win to get his rating up. I don't know. So he declined and ended up losing. So sort of like in this game. We actually see that a lot. You can repeat, but you refuse, and then you lose. Then you're like, I could have drawn. What did I do? Terrible. <clears throat> now this is a game, MVL Nakamura. And in fact, uh, I work for chess.com, and every month they have a death match. Although, that's sort of a misnomer, if you know what I mean, because nobody's died yet. Not yet. And possibly later this year, we'll get these guys to play the death match, because those guys are pretty good. Okay. We actually had Laquan Lim play uh, Andraken a couple months ago, and they're both top 30 in the world. But it, didn't, it was really one-sided. Uh, Andrejkin won by 15 points. Not good. I think that was the record. So maybe we can get these guys to play a death match. You play five minute, then three minute, then one minute. Now, when I was a kid, blitz chess was five minute. That was blitz chess. Nowadays, when I show a blitz game between super grandmasters and they're playing in a tournament, it's usually four minute with a two second increment or delay or something. So now they have a strange time control. OK, so we have a French, so you're happy. OK. You know this game? No. You don't know a blitz game in the French? Come on, <laughs> come on. OK. This should be seven, sort of a newer move. And we're sort of transposing into something else. Hey, somebody in the be beginner's class, at last class, said, how do we get rid of that bishop? Maybe Nakamura is going to show us how. Hey, Nakamura showed us how. That was nice of him. Uh, that's how you get rid of it. H5, that's the Nakamura school of chess. That's exactly what Joe Garnier was thinking. H5. 
Yeah. Oh. I, yeah. I mean, it might be a good move, but I'm afraid. Okay. Nakamura, unlike a lot of super GMs, is not afraid. And a lot of times, I'm analyzing a game with my student, and I'm like, why didn't you make this move? And they're like, I was afraid. I'm like, of what? They're like, I don't know. Just afraid. Okay. So H5, I would be afraid to play. I would also be afraid to have white. So H5 is scary. Knight H3, that sort of stops G5, okay. So H5, the problem is it weakens G5 a lot. So you can't play H6, and F6 is probably going too far. So Knight H3, it's a retreat, which you would expect from a French player. God, terrible audience. And, you know, we're really controlling the G5 square. F6, no, I said that's going too far. So pushing all the pawns in front of your king, yeah, I don't know about that. Okay, takes, takes. Rook to E1, yeah, I like that move. Yeah, I don't know, I don't think black's king is very safe. Okay, we could ask Dustin Hoffman, but he wouldn't know either. He would just say his random stuff, right? Yeah, that joke was over your head, I'll give you guys a break for that. Okay, king F7, that's the safest. Huh? Marathon man, right? You know what I'm talking about? No, no, Marathon. Marath the Marathon Man, actually. That's another movie from the 70s. Yeah. Okay, Bishop F4. I don't know, I sort of like white. That Rook on A1 is not very good. He's going to double it up, and he does. Okay, so Naka's King actually looks pretty safe now. Is it time for white to sacrifice all of his pieces? Yeah? Yeah? I don't know. I, I haven't seen this game, but I'm guessing knight g5 check, knight takes e6 is unclear. What do you guys think? Should white sack all his pieces? You, you White should sack all of his pieces? Yep. I don't know, but you're playing Nakamura. He might have seen it. So? King h1. Ah, Komsky would approve. <laughs> okay, now either knight can go to g1. Very suspicious. Okay. Chore. Rook e3. Nah, he's not sacking all his pieces. He's winning the old-fashioned way by not sacking all his pieces. Ooh, that's a long move. Now, I don't like black's position very much. Now the other knight's coming into the game. Okay, and Nakamura thought if he waited around, white would play knight e3, knight g4, knight h6 check, knight f4, and eventually he would lose, so time to get counterplay, although very risky. And, uh, and MVL's like, thanks for the pawn. That was nice of you. And I don't think black has enough compensation for a pawn, or any compensation for a pawn. Always repeat, good job. King H2, that's exactly what you would have played. Right, John? Sure. Yeah, good answer. I assume he wants to play knight g2, but I'm guessing. And then knight h4, knight f4. Pretty patient for a five minute game. Yeah, just waiting for black to give all his pawns away. Yeah, this is just terrible. So I think almost anyone would resign here, except me. But yeah, Nakamura and I don't like to resign that's the one thing we have in common in chess. We don't like to resign. Although I resign a lot more than he does. But yeah, we don't like to resign. Okay, and here the game ended. But I don't know how. Black's flag fell. White was laughing too much. They forfeited him. I don't know. But I would guess knight f6 check gives white the advantage. Okay, and anyway, a player you've never heard of, Maxime Vacher Legrave. Half of them I'm right. The other half have heard of him. You see how he beats Nakamura, how he beats other top players, Carlson, etc. usually in blitz. Uh, he has beaten Carlson in slow chess. And <clears throat> he hasn't lost a game in 11 months, which is pretty good, right? You said that a lot. And almost all of his opponents rated over 2,600. So that's a pretty good streak. The last 11 rating lists, his rating's gone up. That's also good. And if this video is like not shown for five or six months, I'll look quite the fool, because maybe he'll lose rating points to the next five lists. They'll be like, what's he talking about? So uh, right now, he's number 10 in the world. Uh, 
if the top, 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 top players don't accept their invitation to the Singfield Cup, which they will, then he'll be one of the first alternates to be invited. And then we'll see my favorite player in person. He was in St. Louis once. He played in the Spice Cup at Webster and he won the tournament. But he wasn't as famous then. He was not number 10 in the world. He was number 10 in France, maybe. Mm -hmm.